Now looking at this Forest River Sunseeker, I'm going to show you the difference between a similarly priced Class C versus the Bighorn we were just in. First of all, much lower to the ground, so that's nice for the step up. Hey, just put a little mat there to protect the entrance when you walk in. Now this specific Class C has two slides, one right here for the living room and dining room area, and as you walk back it's going to have another one for the master bedroom. It's actually a pretty spacious unit. This is a queen size bed, it's definitely a lot smaller than what was in the fifth wheel. You got a nice wardrobe area over here. It does have ducted AC, but you will see that the main AC unit comes through the roof up here. So even though it comes through the roof right here, you have this blast mode where you can open this up and it'll shoot air straight in to try to flood this area with cold air. But when you close it, it feeds it through the ducting system. Still though, a unit like this is going to be far louder inside of the RV than a fully ducted unit or a whisper quiet unit like in the Bighorn next to us. It's hard to tell on camera, but this unit's going to have a far more compact shower. This shower, I would say, is maybe a third the size of the shower that was in the fifth wheel we just looked at. Your taller folks might even have to use this little access up here to fit their head and use the hose to reach their head if they're going to take a shower in a unit like this. Again, not bad if you're not spending a lot of time in your RV or if you're okay with a small compact shower. A lot of people travel all over the country in these, stay in places for a long time, and they're perfectly happy with them. If you have a large family, it is gonna be a more cramped area though. Generally, both your sofa as well as your dinette will turn into a bed. You can see how this can come off the stands and it can fall into these little grooves right here, and then the pillows come out and turn this into a sleeping area. It's gonna be about the length of a queen size bed and it will be about the width of a full size bed. The sofas generally turn into a full-size or a queen-size bed. I'm actually pretty impressed with the layout of this specific unit because in many cases you don't have a really great living room layout. What I like about this one is that the sofa right here actually faces the TV right here. And even if you're in the dinette area, you can still see the TV just fine. You don't have to cock your head to the side or look towards the front in order to see the TV. And this one actually has a good amount of shelf space. This one is going to be more of a Formica top, whereas if you saw in the fifth wheel, it's going to have a Corian or a granite top. Generally, your Class Cs are going to have a much more compact refrigerator as well. 99% of the time, it's going to be a Dometic gas electric refrigerator. In some cases, they're putting residential refrigerators in, but the reason why you're generally going to see a gas electric is because Motorhomes are more prone to boondocking or being in areas where you just don't have connections. So without having to run off your batteries or solar power or an inverter, gas electric is going to give you the ability to have a good refrigerator that functions in the middle of nowhere when you don't have any type of connections. Now one of the huge selling points of a Class C is that you have direct access from the front of the unit into the back. So if you pull up into a Walmart parking lot and you're going to be boondocking, you simply walk to the back, close the curtain around the windows, and you're already in your RV. You don't have to dismount from a truck and get to the back and then, you know, hope that your truck is secure while it's connected overnight. Your Class C's are generally going to have this nice overhead bed as well. So this is great for the kids. If you're going to bring your kids or if you have other folks that are going to be traveling with you, having this overhead area is wonderful, simply because it's going to give you the ability to close this off and have roughly a queen size bed up here to use for whoever might be staying with you. This particular one actually has some nice little shelving here as well as power and cup holders. So this would be a pretty good place for children if you have any children that are traveling with you. So keep in mind that most RVs run about eight feet wide. In some cases, they run a little wider if it's a class A or a fifth wheel. But one thing you'll notice about the slides on these, even though they're very long slides, the slide on this class C does not go in or out very far. This is only about a foot and three quarters deep. Whereas if you look at, for instance, the big horn next to us, the slide is gonna come out about two to three feet. So it actually makes the interior volume of the fifth wheel much, much larger than a Class C just because of how far out those slides extend. There's really not a lot I can say about the floor in these units. Most of the time it's going to be a linoleum or a vinyl 
as well as a carpet. Your slides are generally going to have carpet on them, and the main floor is going to have linoleum. That can be different depending on the RV you're looking at. Some of them are going to have real ceramic floors. Some of them are going to have you know, ceramic or wood that continues on onto the slides. But I'd say 80% of them are going to have some type of a vinyl floor with a carpet on the slide area. On Class C's, because they have a gas engine up front or because your engine is going to be positioned up front, you are going to have more engine noise. You're going to hear your engine. It's going to be very similar to if you're driving a tow vehicle. But what you'll realize is many of your tow vehicles don't struggle as hard to pull the weight. And because of that, it will actually sound a little quieter than some of these Class C's. You're also going to have to keep in mind that because your Class C's are generally built off of a chassis that has airbags in the back as well as leaf sprung suspension, it could be very harsh going over certain road conditions. So if you've ever traveled I-10 through Louisiana, you'll know exactly what I mean. It can be a very harsh ride going over some of those bumps. If you're in a Class A or a big diesel pusher, it's generally not going to be quite as bad simply because of the larger suspension and how it's better designed to handle that type of terrain. But this is a really good platform for a family that is going to be traveling to multiple places. They're going to be setting up camp quickly or they might be boondocking or traveling just to areas where there's no connections and they want a way of staying inside of their RV while they're traveling as opposed to having to dismount from a vehicle to get into their RV. These are very popular floor plans. A lot of people rent these floor plans to try them out and I would honestly tell you that if you are looking for a mobile platform that gives you an all-in-one, even with some tow vehicle capability, what I mean by that is being able to hitch up a car behind the unit, a Class C is a good RV to look at. You really get a lot for the money considering you're getting the vehicle as well as the RV all in one unit. And it's a relatively compact unit, so you might be able to take it to certain campgrounds that you might not be able to fit a fifth wheel, either by length or even height. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment field below and like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone. Again, I'd like to thank the folks at Ron Hoover RV and Marine here in Corpus Christi for allowing me to walk their lot. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you soon.